So let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. I know it's been a minute since I made a video. I, I've just been sitting back, regrouping, talking to people, and just looking at the universe. And just going into my own universe. <clears throat> because the more that you understand people, sometimes, the more you understand how people operate. And the more you understand how to avoid certain collisions in life. You know what I'm saying? I really want to change the scope of my channel a little bit. I want to have the same theme, but I just want to lighten it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Here's what I'm talking about. My dreams talk to me. And I had a dream, not like Martin Luther King, but I had a dream. And in this dream, spirit showed me, like I said, people, people and more people. I'm not going to get into all of the logistics of the dream, but basically spirit showed me a bunch of zombies, which represents not me, but I'm saying us in terms so you can understand, you know, just in general terms so you can understand what I'm talking about. It showed zombies, they, which represented us. And these zombies, they did not look like zombies in the movies. See, what people don't understand is that what they show you in Hollywood is a fraction of the truth. They'll give you a little bit of truth and then they'll give you a bunch of lies to scare you, okay? Zombies are not going, people talk about the zombie apocalypse. This is the zombie apocalypse. But it's not people eating other people's uh, body parts and it's not people, Every it's all symbolic. It's not people looking like a bunch of um, undead, you know, dilapidated skin off. The, no, it, it's not about that. The zombie apocalypse is about a lower state of consciousness that people have fell into. Religion, politics, idol worship, all of that shit. It's part of the zombie apocalypse. Or it's part of being a zombie, following somebody, not admiring somebody. There's a difference because there are people that I admire because I admire their talent. But I'm talking about following somebody without question. That falls under the category of harassing people, stalking people, because they don't believe the same way that you do. So in this dream, I saw people running. People just running. They weren't running from anything or anyone, but they were on a stage. Spirit showed me that we're all on one big stage and the stage is getting ready to be pulled from up under us. And those people who are, how can I put it? Those people who are on a higher spiritual frequency or vibration 
we won't fall because we have a foundation that cannot be altered. But the people that are the mindless zombies that follow behind every single person that they think is whatever they think they are, they're the ones who are going to fall. All of the people that you've sacrificed and harmed, and I don't mean necessarily, you know, unalive in, in terms of sacrifice. I mean, all of the people who you've used and abused and harmed, people in your family, your friends, all of that shit is getting ready to come back on a lot of you motherfucking people. All of it. And it's not going to come back because it's karma. It's going to come back because it's the natural law of the universe. What you put out, you shall get back. And because these people are not investing in anything real spiritually, because they're not investing in anything real spiritually, they are, they are carnal, carnal. For them, it's all about the flesh. They have no spiritual backing. They have no spiritual foundation anymore. And they've went along with idolatry worship. And stalking coincides with Idolatry, idolatry worship, when you're worshiping idols, and that includes people on YouTube. Everything is one big stage, one big production, one big play. And a lot of y'all are being played. You're being played in politics. You're being played in religion. You're being played in uh, 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 the entertainment industry. I've listened to people talk over the years, talking about different um, celebrities. Well, this person got this hot chocolate. This person got this. They said it to do this. And I was listening to this lady talk about this a couple of years ago when she was talking about Steve Harvey and what he got. I ain't got nothing against Steve Harvey, but I'm just saying, I'm like, damn, can, can any of you motherfuckers think for yourself? Sorry for cursing, but I'm just, I'm just saying, actually, I'm not sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. But can you think for yourself? You have to have everyone think for you. That's why I am not manipulated by the media and its reporting on certain events that have taken place. Because do you notice that every time there's an election, every time, especially a these past couple of elections, because they've been controversial because of the people that are running. And people have their right to choose whatever candidate they like. That, that's their business. But the problem comes in is when you try to force other people or enforce other people to follow your path or follow the path you want for them. That's a violation. We see everything that's happening with, with the Sonia Massey, um, I want to say tragedy. We see everything that's happening. But my question is, I'm not even going to ask it. 
just forget it. I, I'm not even getting into the. I'm not even going down that rabbit hole. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. But what I will say is this. Every time there's an elect, an upcoming election, it seems like there's always some type of incident where a black person is being unalived by a police officer. And then the racial element is always being played. See, I'm looking at it from a broader perspective. I get what the situation is. I get how people feel. I get people's emotions behind it. I get all that. But does anybody notice that this happens every time, it seems like, around elections, especially within the past, I want to say within the past decade, or at least even longer, Oscar Grant, right after he was um, unalived, Obama was inaugurated into office. Trayvon Martin, Obama was elected the second time in office around that time. George Floyd. In 2020. Now, Sonia Massey, it just seems interesting that these things always happen. It's the timing of it. And I look at things as an occultist. It's the timing of it. The timing. That's what I'm looking at. I get the other stuff. The other stuff, that's my personal views. And I, I'm not really interested in, in dealing with that. That, that. That's for me and me only. But I'm looking at this as an occultist and as a spiritualist and how everything always seems to happen in a certain sequence. And there's a reason for that. I'm not going to be on here long. I just wanted to come through and just talk about a couple of things, you know, that's going on in the world and in the universe. and things that I've been seeing. I got a message for, I have a message for my fellow gay black men or fellow gay men, whether you're black or white. I, I wanna just put, put some information out there that I know from my understanding and my research. I see a lot of and I do, I do social experiments, I do, to test it. Most white men, and let's go back to Sonia Massey, most white men that look like Sean Grayson, that police officer, and this is not to degrade or anything, but it's just based upon my experience and my research. Most white men, they are not interested in being men in the bedroom. They're looking for somebody to bend them over and treat them like the woman in the bedroom. They don't want to be men in the bedroom, gay men. So when I see all of these gay men talking about they're looking for, you know, masculine white men who are alpha, most white men don't want to be alpha men. They don't want to be alpha men. Most white men want to be treated like females in the bedroom. Hell, a lot of these men nowadays who are supposed to be straight want to be treated like females in the bedroom. They want to be treated like females in general. They don't want to take on the man role. They don't want to do that. They don't want to be in a balanced role where you have the masculine and where you have the feminine, no matter what, no matter what the physical vessel is. See, we always kept a balance. There was always a balance, even in the uh, in the gay community. There was always a balance. But now 
it has turned into an imbalance because when you really go out, everybody is looking for somebody to ejaculate in their rectum. There is no intimacy. There is no connections, especially among white men who are into sex with men. Is that where we're learning this? And I'm not trying to be racial, but I'm making a point based upon what I see and what I experience, not by having sex with them, by, but by seeing their interaction in social media as a social as a person who does social experiments. And a lot of these men are married. They're married. So when I see gay men who are not in the closet asking for <laughs> white men to top them basically, I see them do that. They're, they're asking for the same thing all the time and you're not getting the result. You're not getting the result because that cut of meat is not available. And the white men that are into doing that, the ones that are into being men in the bedroom, they don't like gay black men. They want other white men because a lot of them are racist. They don't want gay black men. And they don't want, and, and, and they, they don't. And I'm speaking about the, and let me, let me simplify and clarify. I'm talking about here in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, which is supposed to be the liberal belt, a liberal belt, a democratic belt. But we don't believe that the Democrats are racist, all right? We don't believe that, right? We believe the Democrats are innocent. We believe that white Democrats are not racist. That's the point that I'm making, not trying to be political, but I'm just pointing it out. This is supposed to be a primarily democratic area, but there is so much division and segregation in this area because we've allowed people, blacks and whites, to bamboozle us into turning against each other. Not trying to say no kumbaya, no shit like that, but I'm just pointing it out because this ties into the zombie mentality, the low consciousness, the zombie mentality that people are up under now. I'm going to tell you something. That incident that took place in Charlottesville in 2017, where all of those racist white people and all of those equally disgruntled black people got together and they were all fighting. What people don't understand that people may dismiss that, but that tore the very fabric of our country. And I have noticed a shift in ch and change in a lot of white people since then and a whole lot of black people since then as well. There is a spiritual war going on right now. Ain't nobody looking for no sex. Ain't nobody looking for no love. Love don't live here anymore, or at least not right now. People's mindset right now, because we're in the zombie, we're in the era of the zombie apocalypse now. People and their mindsets are programmed right now in a few categories. It's predator versus prey. And it's take, it's steal, kill, and it's destroy. That is the mindset that people are up under now. And self-gratification meaning drugs and and that's also that that also falls in the category of escape 
trying to escape. So people are not really looking, especially especially white men, they're not looking for no sex from nobody. They, they're not capable of enjoying sex and enjoying intimacy. Truth be told, a lot of black people are the same way. I'm not just going to pick on the white people. A lot of black people are the same way. They don't know how to enjoy sex and intimacy the proper way. Doesn't matter if you're a man who likes a man or a woman who likes a woman or heterosexual. It doesn't matter. Everything is in an imbalance right now. And everyone is battling everyone right now. But they want us to believe that everything is okay. And that is why it's important to try to create your own reality. So Spirit said to me, so Spirit said to me, it said, Seer, this ain't where you want to be. That group of people, those people, those are zombies. These people are zombies. They keep, they don't even understand the, the dream that I had. The people were running in place. They weren't going anywhere. They weren't running from anyone. They were running in place in a perpetual cycle of going nowhere. And that's what the world, that's what's happening in the world to the majority of the population. Not me, but that's what's happening to a lot of people. They're running and they're not going anywhere. What race are you running? How can you win a race when you're not really moving? You're just running in place. You're not progressing. You're just running in place, following behind somebody else. No mind of your own, no spiritual discernment, no wisdom, no intuition. Because you're listening to somebody tell you that you shouldn't like this person over here because they're black or you shouldn't like this person over here because they're white. Give me a reason not to like you first. Who's really behind the power structure of so-called racism, white supremacy. Who is really behind that religion? As some of my spiritual co-workers call it, who's really behind that religion? Is it just white people? Like we've been taught? Or is there more to the story that we don't know? Because I'm, gonna I'm going to tell you something. What I find very interesting, I find interesting all of the, and I don't give a fuck who gets offended. I find very interesting all of the fake outrage about Sonia Massey being unalived by the police officer. All of this fake outrage that's coming from the black community. But yet, each and every day, and I've been on this earth for damn near 45 years, but each and every day I see black people, maybe not, you know, well, they black people do unalive other black people too, but I'm not talking about black on black crime. We all know why that happens. I'm not trying to compare the two in contrast. I'm not trying to do that. But every day I see black people psychologically psychologically terrorizing people, emotionally terrorizing people, emotionally violating people, trying to hinder a person's ability or impede on a person's ability to enjoy their lives. I'm working with <clears throat> I'm working with a woman now and helping her get services for her daughter who is disabled. Her daughter is in her 50s and she has multiple sclerosis. And I'm working with this woman who's an elderly woman, helping her, being a support for her as a spiritualist, helping her get services for her daughter 
because she's facing discriminatory energies right now. And the discriminatory energies she's facing are coming from other black people. She had this woman, this elderly woman, who's trying to help her daughter get what she needs. She has friends, the elderly woman, who are trying to tell her, oh, you should just be quiet and, and don't say nothing and be nicer about it. And these are coming from other black people, particularly other black women, telling her that she should not fight for her daughter who's being discriminated against. This is what we're contending with because we're in the zombie apocalypse. This is the zombie apocalypse. Nobody has a mind of their own and they will attack you if you have a mind of your own. But I've been dealing with this shit for years with my family, with extended family. I've been dealing with this shit for years. And let me all, let me, my people, the ones that, that, that resonate with me, aren't you tired of the fake black struggle? Aren't you tired of being connected to struggle? That is not my life. Let's do this right now. I'm going to be like Reverend Ike right now. I want you all to say to yourself, my life is not about a black struggle. We need to break that curse and break that curse of poverty right now. Say to yourself, my life is not about a black struggle. That doesn't mean that you won't have hardships. It doesn't mean that you can't have compassion for people. But why must we walk in this curse of struggle, can't do, can't, don't, don't have this, always got a problem? We need to eradicate that. And we need to change our thinking. And if that's not something that you want to do, then get the fuck off my channel then this ain't for you. All of this struggle and hardship and heaviness. And then people wonder why they're getting sick, not giving any medical advice, disclaimer. People wonder why they're having so many uh, 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 breakdowns and no breakthroughs because normally when you have breakdowns, you're supposed to have breakthroughs. All of this struggling and, and sadness and despair. But that's because a lot of people are running in place. And they think they're progressing. But when you look around and you're seeing the same exact thing, that means you're not progressing. When you don't feel any difference, that means you're not progressing. Because you're a zombie. And you're in the zombie apocalypse. Not you. I'm not talking to the people that really rock with me. I'm talking to the world in general. Because people have been tricked into stop into not, I'm sorry, into not listening to themselves. Instead, you've been tricked into listening into somebody else. You got to be up under somebody for every fucking thing. I'm not being up under no motherfucking body. No motherfucking body. See, my, my, my ancestors taught me how to be self-sufficient for the most part. They taught me how to think for myself. And that's why I've really never had a lot of friends. And the people that I did have as friends, it really did not last because I think for myself, and that is a threat to zombie antichrist types of people. Zombies are antichrist. And when I say antichrist, I'm not talking in terms of Christianity or, or biblical. I'm talking in terms of neglecting and rejecting the spirit within you. That is antichrist to me. Rejecting the spirit, whatever that may mean for you. And letting other people come in and dictate 
what your energy should be. That's what that's what antichrist means to me. Following something that is not conducive for your spiritual progress and your spiritual growth. That is why I say we're in the zombie apocalypse. And that's where we're at now. They're telling everybody that's Democrat, vote for Kamala Harris. They're telling everybody that's Republican to vote for Donald Trump. What if I don't want to vote for neither one of them? No disrespect to neither one, but what if I don't want to vote for neither one? Or what if I wanted to vote for Donald Trump? What if I wanted to vote for Donald Trump? I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying that I am, but what if I did? With all of the allegations that they've made against him, he's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. But what if I wanted to vote for him? I'm just asking a question. I know who's going to win the presidential election. Because I did a reading on it, but I'm not going to tell people who it is. I'm going to let you all figure it out. It's going to be a lot of people upset. But I saw who's going to win. I saw who's going to win. I did a reading on it last night. But that's something that I'm not going to, you know, put out. You know, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep that for myself. That's for me to know and for other people to find out. If you want to know, do your own reading on it and come to your own conclusion because we're all in different realities. <laughs> we're all in different realities. Anyway, this is the occult view. I just wanted to come through and drop a little look and because I haven't posted in a while and just say that um, be your own person don't be a zombie for anybody or anything create your own stage <sighs> shit anyway that's all I have to say thank you <laughs>